We begin, however, with the Observer, Paul. We do. Uh, Red Sea crisis could shatter hopes of global economic recovery. Mm. So World Bank warns of surging energy prices, slower growth and higher inflation as threat rises of disruption to world trade. So this is ahead of the statement we're expecting in the comments from Rishi Sunak on Monday with regards to the attacks from the UK and US on the Houthi rebel sites in, in Yemen. Mm. For me, however, this is the World Bank. It's a little bit of political gamesmanship, a little bit of hypothesising in their favour, because, of course, there are two sides of this story. One side is you just keep, you just let the Houthi rebels continue to hijack and, and, and pirate ships in the Suez Canal or in that part of the world, where, of course, a lot of our... <laughs> A lot of our imports and exports come through. And this isn't just food or, you know, bits that you've ordered on TikTok. There's medical supplies and everything comes through there. Mm -hmm. So, for me, they're, they're being sort of willfully ignorant about this because if we were just to leave it, we'd have a problem anyway. So our choice is whether we, de whether we defend the area or not. And I yeah. think the, the only way to mitigate the risk is to defend it. And, of course, it is very political and it's dangerous because they're linked to Iran and Iran's linked to Israel. And, I, you know, at the end of the day, the target is Israel. Um, um, but what do you do? You can't just stand back and be passive. I don't. I don't believe. No. Well, the the Houthis have made it fairly clear that this is a uh, that their their attitude to Israel is as as belligerent as it could possibly be, isn't it? They're not claiming any kind of localized uh, dispute. No. There's a the big dis right. There's a big dispute. It's not just about the Houthis. It's from what I know. It's about the Iranians. Mm. And what happened here is is the way that they've the way we have decided to punish the Houthis is by telling them we're going to attack them and gave them a few days or a week, week's notice for the Iranians to leave the area and for the, even the Houthis to leave the area. And then we destroy some Houthi stuff, which is very similar to what the Israelis are do, did to uh, the Gaza. Yeah. And that's sort of like what, what we do, is we just destroy stuff when we should be... Do you think you, you would rather see it would be uh, a, a, war, a strike without warning and you would like to see there would be more loss of life in order to demonstrate <laughs> real, real purpose? That's a good point. That's, that's what you were saying, Lewis. It is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I am saying, you know, I don't care about the loss of life. I, what I would do is I would say that Yemen, can there can be no shipping around Yemen unless it's authorised by... Unless it's nice but you can only manage that. I mean, I'm, I guess I know what you're trying to say. I'm trying to say... Because I won't be enough. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the, the idea is that... I think you're trying to say is that you should police that, that, that water and therefore mm. Houthi rebels shouldn't be able to sail their boats and, and, and be pirates. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. The only way you can do that... Is is with a military? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. the American gunships and British gunships and so on are, are getting we'll involved. Go in, so that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah, saying yeah. They go they go in the, in the straits there, and and they say there will we will not allow any Yemeni ships. Yeah. No, I think that's fair enough. I understand what you're saying. Uh, finally, and. Uh... <laughs>